Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Laura. We're going to do a reading today for the 144,000 for an update on the energy and we are having tremendous amount of geomagnetic activity. The intensity is very noticeable on our physical vessels and on our mental belief systems because I feel like what's happening is we are being upgraded to let go of a lot of old limiting beliefs that were about our power or being insignificant in some way and we are now starting to step more into a feeling of hope, a feeling of power, a feeling of knowing how consciousness operates and how it operates to actually be a physical avatar in the matrix and then to actively start to level up in our consciousness to attract a higher vibrational reality to us and your own power in being able to do so. Okay, let's see what we get. I'm getting the vow and the vessel because it's about you are going to feel physically in your body a sense of inner union and a sense of inner commitment to a higher timeline for yourself and we're always getting divine union messages here because it feels like your bodies are being physically prepared for a divine union. That's what I'm getting. The mother is here, okay, and the king. So you've got divine feminine, divine masculine in a very unique expression of these two energies because the mother is very empress, very feminine energy. It's a surrendered energy. It's a feeling of letting yourself be like a pearl who is going to be, I feel like the right masculine energy is coming in to open up divine feminine to re reveal your truest essence. Because I have this feeling like divine feminine cannot know what it feels like to fully be a divine feminine without a divine masculine to be that last missing piece to come in to upgrade you to make you know and feel on a very physical level what it feels like to be in your feminine energy and the same for the masculine the masculine will not know what it fully means to be a king to be a masculine to be in their divine masculine expression without the sensitivity and nurturing and compassion and unconditional love of the divine feminine. So it's like you need each other in order to activate these lower chakras to start to bring higher consciousness, higher downloads into the lower chakras so that we have a physical ex experience of divine union. Okay, so that's what's happening. That's, that's what's happening with all of this solar activity. We have the shapeshifter on the bottom of the deck, which is kind of interesting. Let's get a star seed card. I just want to see what kind of cosmic galactic energy is here. So there's a lot of cosmic galactic energy here with all, all of the light codes that are coming from the constellations, from the other planets, other star systems, other planes of existence of reality where we have lived in other lifetimes off Earth. And we are remembering these higher galactic energies as well. And they come through as Pleiadian, Arcturian, Blue Avian. They come through as Syrian. They come through in all types of ways. So let's see what we get. Activated Earth and jump in. Andromeda energy is actually here. This is very powerful to about lifting the veil. And this is also about um, being very motivated to start to know how you are actively activating the crystal grid. So the crystal grid is the earth. It's what I call the earth. And it's how the earth is um, positioned. It's all the ley lines, all of the active vortex locations, all the active spots. You are actually an activator. So a star seed that's activated, a divine masculine, a divine feminine that's activated, and especially in union when you come together with each other. You are activating the crystal grid to hold these ancient codes that have come from the future that also come from the past because it's all happening now. And we are activating the crystal grid to start to vibrate at a, at a much higher frequency so that you're going to start to notice an upgraded reality around you. And it's like I was watching Pam Gregory's update, astrological update, about that Lemuria, the new Lemuria, the new Atlantis, they already exist. We are not vibrating yet at the frequency to perceive of them. 
But as soon as we start to vibrate at the frequency to perceive of the realities of the land of Atlantis and Lemuria that exist, then we will actually visibly see them and start to have these discoveries of underwater cities, of land that we used to not be able to perceive. It's not because we couldn't see it. It's not because it wasn't there. It's because when you're not vibrating at a high enough frequency, your reality is literally not what it appears to be. It is going to look more dumbed down, dimmed out. There was a time I remember years ago, just driving through my old town and driving through this very rural town. And I just thought how ugly it was and how uninspired and how like very uh, blah it was. And now we're seeing, even last week with the Northern Lights coming blasting through because we're starting to upgrade our reality to see in ultraviolet colors and to have this higher experience that's not so mundane, that's not so uh, matrixed, it's not all black and white and boring, it's much more vibrant and exciting and magical. Okay, so that's, this is why we are tapped in and getting divine union codes at this level because we are activating and upgrading the entirety of earth around us. Okay, and water your garden is on the bottom of the deck, which to me is saying, water your garden, give back to yourself, don't ignore your self-care at this time, especially with the vessel. Some of you actually, I'm getting, there's some pregnancy energy here with the mother and the vessel. So you could be having possibility of bringing starseed children into the earth very soon because it feels like that's part of this upgrade okay and this is about nourishment body care tenderness and rest earth pulsing is behind that and this is someone laying on the earth you could actually physically lie down in the grass or put your feet onto the earth and absorb the codes and reset yourself I don't know why I'm being drawn to say this, but when animals get injured in the wilderness, they don't, they go innately, intuitively by themselves and they sit and they rest and they recover on their own and they let the earth heal them naturally. And that's how animals heal and revive themselves and restore themselves. And there's a lot of feeling of if you have anything going on physically, to sit outside under a tree and be very still and fast and heal yourself naturally. Okay, and I'm not a doctor, so that is not medical advice. <laughs> that is spiritual advice. Okay, take with it what you will. So let's get a monology card here. Let's see if there's any more specific messages about jumping in, taking action saying yes to change. Andromedan energy is very feisty. The Andromedans are more rare, the starseeds, but they are active and they are moved to take action. They move around a lot. Okay, they have lots of ideas. Balancing spirituality and practicality. What else? Believe in the impossible. Show the world the real you. Okay, so we've got... Full moon in Pisces, full moon in Aquarius energy here, and a blue moon, which is an energy that doesn't come around very often. There's something like one or two blue moons a year. They're very rare. Um, that's when you have two full moons within one month or something. And um, this is something where I feel like you're being asked to take a leap of faith with this energy and know that you are enough, that what you bring to the table is enough. And that what you are deserving of, if, you're des if you feel like you're not deserving of a union, you are. Believe in the impossible. Believe in the thing that feels like it's out of reach. Because with this Pisces, Aquarius energy, your dreams, your fantasies can become reality. But the way that they become reality is by you showing up fully as you and believing in your own power and believing in your own connection to source and knowing that that's enough, okay, that what you want will manifest easily for you. Death and rebirth, transformation, this is like 
Okay, <laughs> this is a divine masculine message, the emperor and the hierophant. And transformation is happening to divine masculine. You are moving into, this reminds me of the king. It's a similar looking energy here where you've got a spiritually enlightened leader that's ready for their kingdom spouse. That's ready for marriage. The Hierophant is about marriage. I'm also getting with this death and rebirth is that this is someone who maybe has had a lot of failed relationships a lot of um, exes that have been very toxic, a lot of relationship patterns that have not gone well, a lot of failures more than success. And the thing is, it's like that the famous quote that I don't know who said it, but he said, the master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried, or something like that. And that's kind of what I'm feeling here, is that you will be successful because you have undergone so many attempts at what you want and because you're not giving up this is an energy of i'm not giving up i'm going to have what i want i'm going to get where i'm going and this is also a lot of responsibility with the king divine masculine feels like they are now understanding that in order to be a king there is a lot of responsibility that comes with crowning yourself and the feeling like you're ready to be a spiritual leader and a powerful divine masculine in your own right. And I don't mean leader like you're gonna start to go and do TED Talks and be on stage and be leading. You can be leading in your own relationship with your kingdom spouse and have this energy and raise a family and have a more, much more simple life because we are getting balancing spirituality and practicality. So this is not about reaching for the stars. This is about remember to keep it very simple and know that happiness is your purpose and not wild success. Because if you're not happy, you're never gonna be wildly successful because there's a measure of success that we have gone totally wildly astray and uh, forget about putting happiness first. Okay. Let's read the king. <clears throat> I'm getting throat chakra thing. Um, let's read the king and see what it says. The ruler, the commander, the emperor. Okay, so you've got the emperor here. If our lives are imagined as a kingdom containing the entire spectrum of human experience, the king presides over it all. Through the lens of the king, we assess the state of our land, make decisions and rule accordingly. Therefore, the king must be thoroughly and regularly vetted so as to avoid corruption, which is why... The king is always chosen by his divine counterpart, the mother, the queen, okay, the divine feminine. The king must be thoroughly and regularly vetted so as to avoid corruption. Recognize the dual nature of the king. He is either seated in benevolence and strength, guiding you toward peace, or he is oppressing the weak out of a need to control. There is not much middle ground. Some think of the king as the ultimate expression of the ego, yet the great kings of mythology and history serve from an egoless place. They take their throne with grace and humility, knowing the divine uses them as a channel to heal deep and long-standing discrepancies in the kingdom. So it feels like the kings are being activated here, activated earth, and the kings are being activated to upgrade the crystal grid by coming into their own and revealing who you are. Okay, so it's like we're gonna see the divine masculines because they're going to rise along with the Divine Feminine. And that's that's what I get from that message. Okay, that's the feeling. Let's see who's guiding Divine Feminine at this time. Tell me more about the Mother Energy. Who's guiding Divine Feminine? And when I say Divine Feminine chooses the Divine Masculine, you will know and feel, there's a lot of feeling in this energy. There's a lot of emotionally being very um, moved by your emotion, moved by love. And when you're moved by love on a divine spiritual level, when you know that it's a sign from the divine, it's a connection to source that you have with this person, that you're being guided by something bigger than you, then it makes it very easy for divine feminine to choose their masculine. Okay. The self, the Shekinah, 
the sacred self. There is a, fi a feeling, because we had water your garden here. Yeah. There is a feeling of being very connected to who you are. Show the world the real you with Divine Feminine as well. And being a very natural, easy reflection of yourself and attracting your masculine this way. So it's like you've dropped all facade, you've dropped all uh, force, you're dropping all the fakeness and anything that feels like, like it isn't who you are. It's very, it's very much fallen away here. So I feel like you have gone beyond the energy of the maiden, which is the first archetype for a divine feminine, which is like Alice falling down the rabbit hole and figuring out who she is and where she is and what she is. And I feel like you are now at this next phase, this next stage. And we cycle through these energies. We also cycle through the crone as well, which is the mystic, the high priestess, the ancient um, elderly healer. We cycle through all these no matter what age we are. And we have arrived again at the mother, which feels like Divine Feminine is ready to be um, unleashing this energy out to the earth. Okay, because it's like we need to see examples of this archetype. And whether it's literally um, a mother or whether it's a compassionate being of unconditional love for your divine masculine, it does not have to be about children here. It could also be about you healing any issues with your own mother or your own lineage and feminines in your family. But you are doing it your way and you are, it's like the black sheep of the family that is gonna be leading with love, okay, and not leading with repeating emotional toxic patterns or anything that feels like you've left it all behind, okay, because the energy of transformation is also here with the Divine Feminine. And let's see who's, who's guiding Divine Masculine, and then we'll wrap this up, okay, who's guiding Divine Masculine? And when Divine Masculine sees the Divine Feminine in her most pure expression, where she is authentic, he also knows who's right for him. Okay. Radha, Soul Flame. And this is the energy of the Divine Feminine in separation from her Divine Masculine. And that's who's guiding Divine Masculine, is actually being guided by Radha, the Divine Feminine, Rediscover a lost part of yourself, experience relationship, harmony, and healing, which is in line with the Divine Masculine craving a healed partnership and a healed kingdom spouse and a healed energy to come together with them in order to start your own kingdoms. That's the feeling. Okay. I feel like we'll leave it there today because we don't have control over these destinies like we think that we do we can uh, attempt to trick the universe and do all of these things and work with all these gurus that tell you how to come into union but really it's already been decided it's already been written it's in your akashic records and once you're really on a spiritual journey i believe you give up your free will and you start to live in alignment with your higher self and your higher purpose and your higher blueprint which is the destined path, okay? And that's why these guides are coming from much higher versions of ourselves and guiding us forward, okay? Let's read Radha. She has not come through in a while. She's the twin flame of Krishna. So when she comes through, she is um, feels like she's ready she is ready to um, birth the creative spirit of the Divine Feminine more fully out into the universe. And by doing that, interestingly, in this energy, she is motivating Divine Masculine to reach out to Divine Feminine, to claim the Divine Feminine. That's what I get. To claim their queen. Okay. She is considered to represent Shakti, the Divine Feminine and creative spirit of the universal life force. Without the female, the male cannot be created. 
And for this reason, Shakti is a powerful force that is honored and cherished. And that would make sense with the messages about all of the starseed children that want to come into Earth because they need Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine to come together in union physically in order for them to be birthed in. Okay. Radha is completely devoted to her partner and illustrates the age-old adage, behind every powerful man is a powerful woman. She's dedicated to supporting all those who seek relationship, harmony, and healing. At one point, she learned what it was like to be separated from Krishna, so she can also bring great healing to those who are suffering the loss of a partner or a separation. So she's bringing healing to the masculines who could be healing the toxicity of past relationships at this time. Yeah. Loving union, connection, and relationship harmony are key. It's important to remember that relationships won't make you whole. Only your, your own love can do that. So it's about we have to feel like we deserve love. And when we actually feel e fully feel we deserve divine love, that's when divine love shows up for us. That's what Radha is saying to me. And with that, um, I feel like we'll wrap it up for today. And I will be doing more videos for Patreon this week. I'm also doing coaching now, if you're interested in doing coaching sessions. And all of that is in the description box. My booking link for one-on-one -on -one readings is in the description box. And I'm sending you all much peace and light. Take care, everyone.